Good morning or afternoon, I suppose, depending on where it is that you are in the world. Um, this is your weekly energy forecast. And uh, apologies if you can hear the horrible sounds in the background. <laughs> there seems to be a wood chipper going on outside my front door. Uh, it has been thoroughly distracting already. Um, so hopefully this will still come through crystal clear. Now, before I get started, I wanted to just kind of pull up um, this mantra card that came through this morning. And it's about happiness. Happiness is a choice I make. We are now in this state where there has been mm, so much has been stripped away, so much has changed, and so much of it has been out of our control. And at, I feel like there's been like these kind of waves of how people are experiencing it. And it's going to look differently for everybody. But essentially, there's a wave where it was, oh, my God, this isn't fair. Everything is happening. And then all the fear that was associated because... This is a global pandemic. Things are happening on a bigger level, and it's actually kind of a big deal. And then people started to settle into it. They started to kind of get into the rhythm, and they started to find ways of being able to enjoy themselves even. So they stopped stressing about homeschooling and just started acknowledging that they could only do their best. And they started reconnecting with things like baking and crafts and painting and whatever and they're they were really starting to leverage this time and really honoring the flow that it was coming up and then people started to get impatient and especially as the weather is starting to improve there was a bit of an antsiness and suddenly we're in that state of feeling really captive and i i, I joke <laughs> for the first couple of weeks i kept referring to quarantine as house arrest uh, which actually is not the best from like a mindset perspective because you really it really kind of drives home that sense that you you're home and you can't really do anything about it. And so when it, we come into this message of happiness as a choice, it's not about denying what you're feeling, but it's always remembering that we can reframe it and change how we view it at any given time. There wasn't really a big difference between week one and week three, where we went from feeling like, oh my God, all my things have been stripped away. Everything is so hard. I can't do this to being able to find that state of flow with it, right? That was something that we chose. And so when we look at it that way, we're able to kind of reframe it. And the really important thing is that we're not rushing this process, that we're, that we're able to still honor the flow of things and recognize that, yes, the weather is improving. Yes, we've been home for longer than we were hoping, um, but not rushing that process and still finding ways to choose happiness while still honoring what's needed for us to be able to beat the coronavirus. So it's really hard because I know a lot of people kind of got to this place and myself included where it was like, I feel these shitty things, but my circumstances are better than other people's, so I shouldn't. And that doesn't really, it doesn't really do any good to shame yourself for, um, for feeling the way that you do. Everything is going to be exactly as it's intended to be. So, um, what I would recommend is that you, you can still acknowledge your feelings and your frustrations and whatever without, and, and also acknowledge um, that things are harder for other people or hard for other people because it's not like, it's not pie, right? Suffering or discomfort or pain or exhaustion, like that is, it's not a finite resource. There's enough of it to go around. So it's okay for you to feel shitty and for someone else to feel shitty. And we don't have to like measure it in different degrees. Okay, so let's see what the message is that's coming through for this week. Yeah. Ooh, okay. I just want to find out what perspective they want to bring forward with this message. Give me one quick second here. Okay. So the card that came through is Green Tara and a big part of why I needed to get a clarity um, about the, the message is whenever the guides are working through you, whenever they're bringing messages, yes, there is whatever was intended by, let's say, in this case, an oracle deck by the card maker. But then there's also your own personal relationship with those with those cards, with the imagery, with um, the being that is represented in the card. And for me, um, Green Tara is the divine mother. This is the mother energy that I personally work with. It's the mother energy that I... Um, try to espouse in my own relationship with my son. So yeah, Green Tara for me is Divine Mother. And so there is this, um, the intention of the card is really around that sense of feeling divinely protected, that no matter what is happening in the world, that you are safe, 
that you are secure and that everything is going to be okay. But because the reason I wanted to check in is because of my relationship with the card and when you're the reader, everything kind of works through your filter. Um, this feels like maternal support. So it's not like when people work with Archangel Michael, for instance, as a protector, he's got that fierce kind of warrior energy, that big brother, um, and he's willing to go into battle. And Green Tara has that, but it's from this softer and nurturing spot. It's more mama bear energy rather than like gladiator energy, if that makes sense. And what I'm hearing is that this is a need. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is this kind of reinforces everything I've been getting lately uh, because I've been getting so many messages about our inner child. Essentially, what is happening through this pandemic is that all of our structures have come down and we have had the things that we have planned and controlled and really orchestrated have been stripped away. And now we're just kind of sitting ducks waiting and trying to be patient. And it's really calling upon what it's like as a kid. When you're a kid, you don't have any personal agency. You have desires, but at the end of the day, you go where your parents want you to go. You live where your parents live. You eat what you're being served for dinner. That's just the way it goes. So while we've had all these things stripped away um, and all of the vulnerabilities and all of the that, that sense of nervousness and the anticipation and the not knowing what's coming, our inner child has been really, really at the surface. And I have some things coming up for that, so I'll make those announcements as soon as they're ready. But what we're being called upon then is to take the trust in this idea that we are divinely protected and then to give that to ourselves, to nurture ourselves, to love up our inner child, because inside there's a part of us that is going, what the fuck is going on right now? And our inner child's desire for security is really at war with our uncertainty. And then, of course, as adults who had plans and orchestrated things and had control and had organization and whatever, there's now this internal conflict because the adult also wants that certainty. The adult also wants things to go back to the way they were. And so these two parts of us ourselves are like kind of acting out underneath. And so what we really need is this this warm, cozy blanket of love that we can snuggle down in and be like, everything is okay. I don't know what's coming, but I can nurture that comfort in, in trust that whatever is coming is going to be okay and that it's going to be right for me and that I'm going to be safe and my loved ones are going to be safe. We can also use childlike wonder to get curious about what the new world is going to look like, about um, to dream, because kids have the capacity to dream way beyond grownups, to dream up what we want our lives to look like once this is over. What are the things that have been working for you in pandemic that you actually want to carry on and integrate into your regular life once everything goes back to normal? And what they're saying is, and that's why the air quotes came out, is that there is no more back to normal. Like normal is going to change no matter what. It's not going to be the same. So that same... Um, request for getting flexible and getting comfortable with not knowing what's coming um, that needs to extend even after the pandemic because we're recalibrating we're finding our way again we're sort of like evening out and figuring out where it's all going to go so there is the global message of you are safe and secure but the internal mission of nurturing that part of yourself that really needs a mother's touch to feel safe, to feel comforted, to acknowledge those feelings, to like kiss the boo-boo, so to speak, right? But it's like in the heart so that we can come out of this stronger for it um, with a stronger sense of our strength, of our resilience, and of what we're capable of. So that is your message this week. I'm just seeing the comments right now. Hi, Angela. And you're getting more tired at this stage. Yeah. I think because we didn't know how long it was going to be, some of it was like we were treating it like a sprint. So we were running really hard and doing all, hashtag all the things. But we're actually running a marathon. So we need to be able to sprint and recover. We need to be able to pace ourselves. We need to be able to um, have endurance that we weren't maybe expecting at the beginning. On top of being sensitive creatures in a crazy time and everything else that's going on. So it is, um, this is a lot of big inner work. And the thing that's kind of tricky about it is that it wasn't, it's not like when you sign up for a spiritual retreat and you know that you're going to come out of it the other side forever changed. This was a global event 
it was something that nobody opted into. It just happened. And, um, and everyone is forever changed for it, whether they were ready or not. And that can be a really scary place. You know, I talk a lot about energetic consent and uh, we didn't consent to this, but this is where we're going. And so when we are not the ones who are in charge, when we don't have a say, so we just get to choose, how do I want to show up in this? How do I want to grow? What can I learn from it? And it's remembering that that is the agency we do have. We might not get to decide the outcome, but we get to decide how we're going to navigate these waters. So, okay, my darlings, I am going to uh, get this out to you now. I'm hoping to have the inner child stuff that I was working on coming out soon. And uh, I will keep you posted as soon as I know, you will know. And of course, on Thursday, we have our final co-work party that is scheduled for April. I hope you will join us. It's happening at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, comment in the group if there is anything that you want to know about how you can participate. Okay, take care. Have a beautiful week.